Let's go. What is this interview? Volume is not at max. Let's go. Inship with Grandmaster Hans Neiman, whose chess spoke this inter for This interview speaks for itself. His okay. First SCC match is a victory over Maxime Vachelagrav. This interview One is comedy gold. Okay. I think we've ever seen. Hans, congratulations. First question. What's going through your head right now, and what does this first SEC victory mean to you? Let's take some predictions. I'm gonna start. Make, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have fun with this. I'm gonna make some guesses. I'm expecting Hans to say something like, "This was completely expected. I'm. I'm better than him. It's not that big of a deal. I just expect to win every match and then play. Play Magnus. That's my guess. Volume's too soft. Okay, I'll up. I'll up it. Okay, let's go. Um, I'm very uh, happy with with how I played in in some moments. It was either very very good or, or quite poor. So. Um, hoping I could have been a bit more consistent, but um, Maxime, you know, was uh, won the SEC and uh, is, is very, very strong, an X4 champion in Blitz. So uh, it's Wait, certainly. Maxime never won the SEC. He lost in the finals to me the one year he beat Magnus. <laughs> okay, I mean he's he, he won he won the he won the world world Blitz I think one year maybe two years, but um, he didn't win the SEC. That's for sure. A big victory. Um, I'm sure many people thought that I was a huge underdog, but uh, I guess uh, I showed that it was a bit closer than people would have predicted. Yeah, Hans, as you mentioned yourself, um, in some of the moments you played really, really well, sometimes um, less. I think one of the things that made you so notorious is that your level Wait, of play is... Wait, you guys said Hans did a horrible interview on FIDE? Okay, um, let's see. Let's keep going. Okay, we'll watch that after. Uh, how do you explain that uh, yourself? Like uh, this, this specific style of yours. Uh, uh, what do you see is the reason for that? I, I think that um, uh, some of the positions that I was getting at the opening, uh, and I and I watched in preparation for this match. I didn't really check that many openings, but I watched like maybe five or six hours of all of his matches, and um, I feel like in time pressure I was blundering. Um, so perhaps the swings are. I'm better at uh, certain positions, but uh, I don't. This notion that I um, have very large swings uh, was more so used to to for for another implication. Uh, so I don't really take it too too seriously. I don't know what he's saying, but actually, you no. Know, one thing that's I, like I'm not going to toot my own horn, but if if Hans was actually watching matches, he definitely should have watched the matches that I played against MVL and the matches that. Um, the match that I played against MVL and the match is probably that Magnus played. Because the one thing actually that I've done very well against Maxime, if you do watch my matches against him, is I've always been able to find like one very annoying variation in, in one of his openings, like very specifically the Grunfeld with the white pieces or something like... Um, or something like the Berlin, and I basically just hammer on it over and over because Maxime doesn't really have... He doesn't really have many plans. Like, there's plan A, and that's generally it. He doesn't have a plan B or a plan C. Uh, and that is his big weakness, is that if you find something within his Grunfeld or you're able to play the Berlin and just nullify his advantages with white, he doesn't have a plan B. Um, he, he very much plays one opening almost every game. And without that ability to have some variety, if you can find that weakness, you're going to have great chances to beat him. You're gonna have great chances to beat him, and that's what Hans did. I like. I didn't watch the match closely, but I did see the two games that he beat him in the Berlin End Game. I think from the black side, and that is a perfect example of where Maxime could not shift it the way that he needed to. Uh, Hans, this is your first SEC appearance. Uh, obviously, uh, by the numbers, you're an underdog, but uh, you're also very confident. Uh, you're expecting yourself, I'm pretty sure, to win a lot of these matches. How motivated are you? By the potential for a for a match against Magnus, and um, how do you kind of bring yourself into that zone of confidence where you expect to beat a lot of these top guys? Well, you know, if if it wasn't for you know all of these sort of un unfair attacks and, and being defamed <laughs> by so many people and you know blacklisting me and Here we go. not inviting me to any tournaments, then I think that my rating would be much higher. You know, uh, with St. Louis not inviting me, Chess.com banning me for no reason, so. I would say that um, the the no reason. Of wow, the victim card. The victim card comes out, eh? Victim card comes out. <laughs> no reason. LOL. Yeah, no reason. Yeah, only a slight problem, which is that he cheated. But hey, who who's counting, right? My real chest level actually comes from the lack of opportunities, and um, I think that as I was given an opportunity here to show my best chess, I showed that I could beat one of the best best players in the world. So um, for me, my only motivation is to uh, uh, become 
uh, the best chess player in the world and compete against the best chess players. I mean, and, it, uh, yes, actually, for anybody who's asking, it is confirmed. He admitted to cheating on chess.com. This is not something where it's like chess.com says this. There's some dispute over the chess.com report, but Hans admitted to cheating. He admitted it to chess.com and he like he has admitted it himself. So it's not something where it's like when you guys are saying, like, is it just chess.com or something? Um, no, he admitted to it. He admitted to it. So it's not like a one way street. All I hope is that uh, I receive a simple opportunity to play um, because of course once I start getting invitations again uh, I assume that I'll be able to show that I can beat the top players like like I did today so Hans as you mentioned yourself you believe your strength is uh, very high we've certainly seen that as well um, how do you work on your game like uh, you know you've improved from uh, 2400 to 25 to 2600 2700 and so on uh, how do you work on your game? Like, could you share without going into specifics? Uh, what exactly? What you is work that? What on? is that? Uh, oh my gosh! What is Ani saying here? Ay yeah yeah. Uh, is this like? This is a very strange question. Over the past few years, it's been a lot of uh, building psychological strength uh, because it's very very difficult to play uh, when uh, everyone is uh, sort of maliciously uh, accusing you and trying to ruin your career by Word salad, pressuring yeah. organizations not to invite you. So I would say that if most players had to play under the stress uh, as I was 19 years old at the time, they would also you know, face difficulties in their career. But I think over the past two years, I have not just done improved in chess, but I have improved my mental strength. And now I have the mental fortitude to, no matter what my sort of uh, uh, upset, insecure um, um, sort of opponents who can't handle losses uh, have to say or try to do, uh, it doesn't affect me. And I'm going to show my best chess every day. So I would say that uh, most of it is just sort of um, building mental strength and 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 um, and working through things that have happened and, and how That's to not the question. have focus uh, uh, when things go wrong. Um, and I think that perhaps um, now I'm fully sort of uh, able to to navigate uh, all of that pressure and stress um, uh, and able to show my best chess. Yeah, it's certainly very important, but still, your chess understanding is incredible. Your chess uh, skills are as well. I want to, I want to know more chess specifically because you definitely work on chess uh, a lot. Sure. I assume. Well, I, so I, what, I, I how do really you work like... on chess specifically? Yes. Well, I, I like to to play a lot of blitz and in, in, in training games. Um, if you, one of the big breakthroughs that came for me um, was uh, playing, um, I guess, during the pandemic or shortly after, when I would just play a lot of blitz and blitz and. Um, I also, in classical chess, I played around 260 games in one year, which I think is a record. Um, so I personally find that uh, it's best to learn and practice. And um, I guess I have the ability to just play, you know, thousands and thousands of games and, and sort of build some pattern recognition and, and understanding through sort of uh, volume. And I think Hikaru is a player who, who has improved that way as, as well. So, um, <laughs> of course, you work on openings and, and Okay, this is this is hilarious. By the way, this is actually pretty funny when he says that. He like what he's saying. I'm I'm gonna tell you guys that I I think that it's actually wrong. I'll tell I'll tell you what I think the biggest reason for my improvement is is not related to the volume during the pandemic. I think it's that everybody else was very lazy during the pandemic. Um, so like that that's actually what i would say when, when people try to say this about like you know me improving by volume i think the si single biggest reason is because from probably 2020 like march or whenever it was through about 2022 whenever i started coming back basically the top players and just gms in general were very lazy they were not playing chess online a lot they were very much traditionalists uh and so they were probably studying some but they were being very lazy and just like watching netflix doing all these other things whereas i was playing a lot of chess which kept me very sharp so i think the edge i had was specifically because people we're not playing more than the actual volume itself and you have coaches and um but i would say that uh i personally try to do what i enjoy and when i am uh in a good mood and i'm enjoying life no no but and, actually uh, i'm not trolling you guys so i'll tell you back like i'm not trying to be weird here but when i was when i when i was like if i think about 2019 or 2018 i'm gonna be honest like i'm just gonna be honest here like the way that you study as a chess player is you have to have something to look forward to you have to have another tournament another event like when you have an event coming ahead in like two months and four or two weeks four weeks when you have an event to look forward to it's very easy to find the motivation 
to basically focus and find that spirit to study chess get ready and i think that when the pandemic happened like let's just say march of 2020 with like the candidates basically being postponed i think a lot of players even in the candidates they were basically not sure when the next turn was coming and when you're looking at a long break of like three four five months with no turns happening and you think that there aren't going to be any events for a long time to come it's very easy to lose that motivation because what are you preparing for then it's very hard to find it within yourself to want to study chess if there's nothing to do like if there's nothing to do like let's just say it's april 2020 and you're like you're number 15 in the world for example what do you do you know you're not playing a tournament probably for the next couple of months at least you don't have the motivation so that's why when i talk about it like very specifically i think a lot of top gems simply didn't know how to find the motivation and as the pandemic ran on once you got to like june or july and you're like you're like holy blank like there's never going to be when's this thing going to ever end i think that basically the people just the, the the habits they had basically became much worse they became much much worse is my general takeaway um and i feel good then i play my best chess i i think this um notion of as you saw my um, berlin theory was not too up to date today uh you know but uh, i was playing quite well and, and that was more more important um so um you know yeah i, I mean yeah that, as, as you say in chat also maybe start looking for other ways other other ways to earn a living we'll cover the feed interview in a second too and we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it all up but i do think that that's true though i, I think it's very true that the biggest reason is because the gms got lazy because they had no motivation because they thought like when are when are you even able to travel when's the next turn like there's so many things going on and so few of them actually like i mean i'm one of the pioneers obviously if you look at the top gms very few of them were playing online if you look at 2020 if you look at the random title tuesday I'm betting there were maybe two or three 2,700 plus players who were playing. I mean, it was not common. Like top players were not playing in these big events online. Whereas now, of course, you look at Title Tuesday, everyone and their brother shows up for it. So uh, I do think it's legitimately a thing now. Beyond 2022, it's very much I've had to work a lot harder. So let's keep going. Um, play a lot. I play a lot and um, just uh, try to fortify my mind. Yeah, makes sense. Thank uh -huh. you. Hans, I have one last question. Uh, you're, you obviously don't have a lot of time to celebrate. You're in Kazakhstan for the World uh, Team Rapid and Blitz. Can you talk a little bit about that event, the team that you've assembled, and uh, uh, your approach going into this event, which I believe starts tomorrow? Yeah, so my, my website, jamhans.com, is sponsoring a team. We've got a very strong and talented go. team, including uh, Visu, Brandon Jacobson. Hoping he'll be back on chess.com soon. Uh, but I'm, she's going to show his best chess Um over the board and let the chess speak by the way you, you know what's really funny about this i think brandon's only played one game in this event out of the eight rounds and he, he, he lost the one game so he has not actually been playing that much for the team but a very strong team of very talented players um so looking forward to this event i think we're going to be world champions and um mm -hmm. uh, i think again we're going to be vastly underestimated we've got a junior board uh Achiad Mero, who's actually chess.com staff you see that badge in his chess.com account he is an 1850 fee day player with a 2700 chess.com rating so you know we've got some some dark horses some some very underrated talented all teams right. who i think you're gonna all right surprise in the next week grandmaster hans demon congratulations on your first scc victory good luck in the world teams tomorrow and good luck against wesley uh and okay. in the sec in general and i look forward to seeing you in the blitz pool both of you okay anyway while we're at it you guys um Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the standings in the um, in this event, the FIDE World, World uh, the FIDE World Rapid Team Chess Championship. When we look at the teams. Let's see. Where is Hans.com? They are currently number twelve in this in the, in this list. They're number twelve, four and a half points. Uh, they're three. They're two and a half points out of first place. So unlikely they're going to get a title, and they're definitely not having a great performance overall. A lot, lot of unfortunate losses uh, in, in, for the team. So much red. I know. So much red. Life is tough sometimes, uh, no matter how many expectations you have. Watch the rest. Okay, let's finish it. <laughs> I'll be challenging you pretty soon. Okay, Good luck. Yes, but Anish is running away, so we need him to. to play oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, taking you to, to a place in Utrecht I know, and I'm going yeah. to. We're, we're, going to your, uh... we're going to the wedding venue. We're going to the wedding venue to have real intimacy. It's, it's going to be, we're going to play, I'm going to play Hans in a, in a wedding hall, guys. It's going to be very intimate. It's a wedding hall. We're going to spend hours yeah. there together. Yeah. One of the most prestigious venues in Utrecht. Not too okay. All right. Now we're going to move on. We have one more interview. What is this one? So, Hans, first of all, how is your tournament going? Uh, terribly, terribly. You... Too loud? Okay. And for your team? It's not that bad, but uh, it, it's going to improve. 
You've assembled quite a young, energetic and strong team. How did you go about selecting your players? Um, I don't really, I just chose my friends. Uh, and I believe in my friends. <laughs> I don't want to have people in my team that I don't really know. So I don't really like hanging out with the chess players. So being in a team is sort of annoying, but since they're my sort of longtime friends, uh, I thought it would be fun. So you're spending a lot of time together as a team here in Astana. Have you done any team activities at all for team bonding? I think my private activities with my team are unfortunately something I cannot share. But we've been uh, enjoying the very unique city of Astana. And in the chess side of things, are you training together, preparing for games together? I mean, chess is a very individual sport, right? So having a team event, it gets tricky. Do you help each other prepare for games? I haven't prepared for a single game here. I've just, I don't really like rapid. It's quite boring. I, I had some nice games, but um, uh, I just sort of, you know, relax. No need to prepare. It's just, just play chess. And what has been your favorite thing about this tournament so far? I think it's yet to come. Well, thanks, Hans. I hope it comes and I hope you have a great tournament further. Thank you. Okay, that was just a weird interview. That was that was some weird stuff. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's just some weird stuff. <laughs> that was just some weird stuff. I, I mean, weird. Yeah, that was just weird. But whatever. That that's his that's his mojo. I mean, that's his thing. He wants to be like that. But I mean, that's yeah, it's definitely off-putting for sure. <laughs>